first, let me take the opportunity to give a detail about Dr. Atta Jahangir Mosadi, who is an associate professor in the from the School of Information Engineering, Jackson University of Science and Technology, China. Let me now speak about Dr. Jahangir. Dr. Jahangir Mosadi is a distinguished scholar with a rich academic and professional background. Dr. Mosadi's professional journey is marked by significant contribution to the field of having served as a project engineer in high voltage transmission and the power ministry of Iran. His expertise spans a diverse range of areas, including plumb tracking, robotics, sensor networks, based event source localization, digital signal processing, neural networks, artificial intelligence, fuzzy logic, and embedded systems. Additionally, he contributes to the academic society even if, and he is a member of Various, various institutes and journals. A member of the editorial board of the International Journal of Applied Electronics in Physics and Robotics. Dr. Mosadi's dedication to scholarly pursuits is evident through his publications in esteemed international journals and conference research, make him a respected figure in the academic and professional relapse of engineering and technology. Yeah, good morning, uh, uh, Dr. Mosaidi and yes, the Conference agree. Management Committee and all the participants. So uh, without wasting any time, uh, I will just brief about this uh, presentation schedule. So the, uh, the presenter already have uh, the schedule. So we will go about uh, eight to ten minutes of presentation and uh, two to three minutes of question and answer sessions, and it will be followed by our keynote session by Professor Mosaidi. So Professor Mosaidi, please uh, continue. Okay. Hello. Uh, good good morning to India, but it's also evening in China. Am I audible? You are clear yes. and loud. Yes, sir, you are okay. clear and loud. Thank you so much. If, if you turn off your webcam, maybe my net permit to have the better connection. Okay, great. Uh, uh, first of all, I should thank from the uh, conference committee that invite me to have the talk. I'm Dr. Atha Jahangir Mushaidi. Uh, actually, I'm educated from Savitri Bhai Pule University, India. It means that around seven years I was in India and much more familiar about India environment. Uh, but now I'm working as the professor, associate professor in Jiangsu University of Science and Technology. Um, till today, I have done some a small job as uh, our colleagues talk about it, uh, which I will not uh, going through that. But today talk, it's about the, talking about the gas sensors and its application in the ENOS system. Then I'm going to talk about some mathematical model and we will finish with some uh, reference. Just um, because I don't want to miss the time, um, let me start from the topic and start from the gas sensors introduction. You know that uh, sensors as the first node of contact to the real environment having the, some vital rules in today's uh, science and uh, gathering the data. Uh, especially uh, for this type of sensor, as we know them as the gas sensor, they are going to detect the various gas in the environment that we have, especially we want that they are working in the real time and they can take the information from the dynamic environment which we have. And, Something that we should know about this gas sensor is that we should always think about some terms like the energy consumption, sensitivity, um, uh, also reproducibility and also repeatability of them. And also the main um, fact for selecting of them is the cost, which we should always uh, think about them like other design and other 
uh, product. Uh, currently, we have different type of the gas sensors. We have optical gas sensor. We have service uh, acoustic wave that we call it SAW, or electrochemical or catalytic one. And most famous one is the semiconductor that um, later I will tell you why we are using them more. But uh, they, we know them as the cheap and also uh, quick reaction time, and uh, also the good uh, variety of the sensing gap uh, gas, which uh, they can do for us. This uh, type of the gas sensors, I mean the uh, semiconductor one, they also have different, different type, but uh, one type of them, which we know them as the MOX is more in demand and, we are using them more in the sense in the gas sensors study. One of the reason is the cheap price, as I tell you. Another one is the vast number of the gas that they can measure, uh, to, uh, considering the selectivity of them. And the next thing is that they can work in the real time, and price is also cheap, and they are available. Also. These are the two, three uh, factor that we should consider about them. But even uh, they have this merit to be cheap and be available for us. They have some problem that uh, before going inside the application of them, having the model, we should have a proper look to them. One is that the sensitivity of these gas sensors is more regarding the humidity and temperature. And another one is the calibration problem which uh, always should consider and should take care about them. Also, some of them have the cross sensitivity, which, uh, and also uh, one is the uh, slow response time, which we have for this gas sensor. Then these are the factor that always we are, have the challenge when we are working with them. And um, we should always think how to improve these four challenge, which we have. Then uh, by this hypothesis in the MOX type, there are two groups which are more in demand that we know in TGS sensors and another one is MQ type of the gas sensors, which uh, they are available and you can buy them uh, easily from the uh, <clears throat> market. But again, as I tell you, temperature and humidity are the main factor that can injure uh, and also affect the response of this gas sensor. Here I bring the name and um, uh, also the target gas of these two group of gas sensors. Suppose for TGS-821, which is the older one, we have the hydrogen gas. Uh, for example, A22, we have the organic solvent vapor. We can have MQ2 that can detect the methane, butan, LPG, smoke, and so on. And something that I should tell you about the assessor is that the scale of measurement for them are in ppm. It means part per million. And something that very fast you can understand from this table is that they have different, different ppm. It means that they are uh, sensitive to different level of the gas sensor. Suppose MQ2 is uh, sensitive to zero to 100 ppm uh, of the methane. And we can have the equivalent one in even TGS group, which have the more ppm. And one more thing, this ppm that is declared here, it's in the very good condition. It's in the lab that temperature and humidity is controlled. But in the real scenario, these ppm, some of them are not affordable and we cannot get them in real life. That is the first. With the idea of gas sensors and um, also sensing the different gas, there is uh, some hypothesis that we are going to talk about. It. You know, one of the sense that we have in human is a smell or olfactory system. In olfactory system, as I show in this figure, we have some receptor which acting as the sensor for us in our nasal part. And then they can take the odor from different uh, area and different odor. Then they can come inside our nasal. And by the receptor that we have in the nasal cavity, uh, 
uh, and especially olfactory bulb, they can send the signal to our brain. Then our brain can analyze and give the conclusion for different, different uh, gas uh, sensor types. This hypothesis helped the scientists to think about one concept that we call it enos or electronic enos. What is real that enos? It's something like that we are going to replicate the same olfactory system which we have for the human. Suppose in human, we have receptor, we will remove that box and put the gas sensor there. We have the olfactory bulb in human, bulb in human. We will remove them, put the processing signal or process signal part or database and pre-processing part. Then when the, this olfactory bulb will send the data to our brain, there is some part that it can analyze, classify, and conclude about the smell. We can remove that box and put the pattern recognition one. Then as we replicate the noise of the system, we call it noise. And as we are going to have the electronic part, we call it electronic noise. Then the concept of electronic noise with this definition and block box come to the picture. But there are some stage and some work that uh, we should know about uh, electronic noise or enos. As I show in this graph, we have some step to sensing and classifying the smell. First is that suppose I have this flower, aroma of this flower, I want to take the sample. First, we need to uh, extract the sample, which they have some method we will go and talk about. After this extraction, I need some sensors that can smell, can and capture the signal from the um, odor for me, and then send this signal to the second box that we call it control and measurement system. You know that these signals are in the form of analog. And then first they should convert to the digital one. Then some pre-processing should happen. Some data are not good. Some data are noisy. Some data are affected from environment. They should remove. And then some feature from signal should get and then put for the second part that we call it classifier or pattern recognition uh, part. This is the whole block diagram of an enos. Here, for example, you will see I had six sensors. One of them was sensitive, for example, to gas A, then it rise up, it can give the um, signal or other pattern of my gas. And another one is uh, sensitive to another sensors. Then gathering the different sensor will give me and facilitate me to have the different signature or different pattern of the gas. This concept, total, total concept, they call it as the enos, which use nowadays in various industries. Suppose they are using in food industry, agriculture, uh, microbe um, ma ma microbial quantity, macromedical one. Also, they are using uh, in detection of the different leak source, something like CO and CO2. Uh, we get in the branch of the safety industry. They can use for air quality and aerospace even industry and so on. Then till now we understand what is the main block diagram for the enos and where it can be used. Even uh, this is one of our research that we test the quality of the onion and rotten onion, rotten orange and orange. And we can get some pattern as you will see here or this they call it odor pattern or other signature from the uh, different gas uh, sensor talk. Uh, so on, maybe one person tell you that having the enos is difficult. I can say, no, it's not much more difficult. First, you need some array of sensor, as I show you here. This is my first enos that I make it in years 2010. And then you need to get this signal, analyze the signal, and then have the graph of them. Uh, maybe um, you can follow this YouTube link that I make, or even when we can have the video of that, you will see here that how this odor will reach my sensors and my sensors can give the output and give one pattern for a specific odor, which 
already I tell you, and we know this word as the other print or other pattern or other signature, which can be different uh, compared to the different gas uh, velocity and vol vol uh, volume, and also different gas type. Okay, please remember this shape because later I will uh, have some word about it. After that, you know, I work for some better one means that increase the number of uh, number of the sensors. And after that, even from that ugly face, I come to some product like this, that uh, here we have just three sensors and we can even analyze with the MATLAB and use very cheap uh, controller like Arduino 8-bit controller and then take the signal. You will see here that we are doing the sampling with the help of the ENOS. And also we have the sensor array, which for this work can even extend it to work on the robot, which this is part of my PhD that I work for other localization system and we published it in 2017, uh, which is going to find the source leak of uh, gas. Uh, you can have a look to uh, this video to get under, to have the more understand about the source localization. When I talk about source localization, I mean that I have one source of the leak of the gas. It can be CH4, CO2, CO, and so on. And the job of my robot is that it should go and tell me that which location it will use. Where it can be applicable, it can be applicated to detect the bomb. It can be applicable as the sniffer dog, which currently we have in the uh, security job in the airport, or it can be help the firefighter or fireman, uh, which when they are going for the mission, you know that the second tragedy always is that there is the leak of the gas and then when blast will happen, they will die. Then when we talk about source localization, we means that when are your robots can exactly indicate the place of the leak which you have. Uh, okay. These parts, uh, I, if you want to read more, you can follow the book which I published in 2019, and which in that we talk about more about other localization. That was the application for the Inos. But what is remainder? The main problem is that till today, there was not much more simple mathematical model for the gas sensors. Why? Because, you know, modeling, of the gas sensors due to their vast application can be helpful. And it can help us to analyze the sensor's behavior better. Some new algorithm for the detecting the gas can be there. Some theoretical experiment can help us to improve the technology of the sensors. And especially four problems that I tell you can be solved with the help of mathematical equation. One is that the calibration problem. Second one is the temperature and humidity effect which you have from the environment. Third one is the selectivity and sensitivity of the gas sensors part that you have. And the main and important one is the time for sensing the gas, which we know it as the sensing time of the gas sensor. All these problems can be solved with a good mathematical method. Now, let us see. As I show you one picture, in the gas sensors, we have three area. One is that the transient time or transient area, when it will absorb the first touch of my sensors to the other. Then I have one overshoot, as you will see here, and then I'm going to have the study state area that we call it the place that it will be fixed. But if the gas sensor response was always stable like this. We didn't have much more problem. The temperature and humidity will come and always affect this uh, plot. And always it will press the, uh, the top, I mean the overshoot of me, and always affect the steady state part of my gas sensor. Then if we thinking for suppose three other, as I written here, air, ethanol, you will see that the response from the ethanol, it will be different than air, which is obvious, but you will see that the peak time for the ethanol was less 
but transient time was okay, but steady state again becomes same. Then if I'm going to just judge my gas with the help of steady state, I cannot take the significant difference between the air and ethanol. Because most of the both of them with affection of the temperature and humidity reach the same place, which is not uh, correct and it can affect the result of this. Now let us look what other researchers have done. Researcher till today, they are make six or eight mathematical model as I written here for you. And you can follow it from the paper which we published in 2013. In that, uh, we show that how they make the mathematical model that some of the parameter are not understandable by simple people. It means that as the user, we don't want to work in the chemical um, engineering part. We just want to use it and analyze the data. Some parameter is not clear for us and, or just, just uh, company which made the sensors have that. For example, K gas, C gas in equation two or X two or tough in the equation four and five, it will be more difficult for people to analyze the gas sensor for them. But I should tell you between all this present model, model number five is most accurate, but the number of parameters for this uh, model is more. And you will see that some unknown parameter we have, which we should think when we are going to model the gas sensor and think about how to do it. Then, as I tell you, some parameter, for example, like G in the parameter five, it's related to the sensor conduct. And, and uh, for example, number six is more complicated one with K and NZ and um, Epsilon is not much more clear for all. Then what people have done before it consists of some dynamic model, some ANN model, some SVM model, and some fuzzy logic model, which I can tell you that even if we compare this one also, we will see that again, number of parameter is more and understand the unknown parameter is difficult, tough for the user. Now, what I have done is that I propose two models. Model number one is related to year 2030. Model number two is related to 2080, some years back. Recently also we have one model which is under published. And in model number one, I use the two group of TGS813 and MQ7. And for model number two, I use the model of TGS26XX2C and propose the model. Based on the hypothesis of the three different area, we understand that this area can be covered by the second order equation. Uh, and it then in the second order equation, it can have just three parameter instead of um, six and seven parameter, which we had before. And we start to check our experiment with the PPM of 35 to 720, under the constant humidity and temperature condition. Then I made my enos, as I show you the picture before. Based on that, I like the data. First, we'll inject the odor of alcohol, and then we uh, pass it through the sensors, take the signature of the sensors part, and then based on that, we could make one mathematical model to show the behavior of my sensor. As you will see, I have done the second order equation. And in that, I have the parameter of K, zeta, and WN. And based on then, we should detect this and estimate the WN, zeta, and K from my sensor with the good R square of 98 above. And after that, we could compare first with the uh, real signal after we and the GA genetic algorithm, which we have, we find the better uh, value for K, Zeta, and Omega. And, and after finding that, we go and compare with the famous model, which they were available. When we compare with the uh, Gomez model or uh, exponential model, which we have, we understand that we are 
2% better than him when based on the model that we propose. And we could cover all the response of my gas sensors with a very good environment, uh, with a very good R square parameter. Then if we compare the multi expectional model and model number one, which we developed, we call it transfer function, you will see that uh, the accuracy and or the R square two in most of the case, my model is more even we have case of 99%, which for the exponential model, the maximum number it's about 97. Is that? 2% or 0.2% well, you know that this is also very great, but compared to number of the parameters that we have, it's uh, that was very good uh, work. That was the model number one. Then after that, we can we find that instead of having the second order, we can have the one model, we just have two parameter instead of three even parameter, we can have two parameter of K, P, and tau and theta, uh, which we can compromise it with two parameter. And with that, we can predict the movement and respond of sensors. Here, if you will see in this picture, I have K T K T KP as the efficiency of the process, theta as the delay time, and tau as the fixed time, which we have based on the figure. And you will see that the shape of that, it's very similar to the gas sensors uh, model. So on in the formula that I show you, delta means the total change in amount of feedback and delta V shows the total change in controller output that we will find it with KP. For this parameter, we find the KP as parameter one uh, with the delta means to delta value or VM to C. And then we can have the KP as three by three with the fixed parameter, which we have. Then we start to establish our model and test it with different scenarios. Scenario number one, we just fix the temperature to 30 and humidity to 30%. We take 100 sample. Scenario, step number two, we take fixed humidity and change the temperature of 27, 40, 50, and 60 with 400 sample. Scenario number three was fixed temperature and variant uh, humidity of 20%, 30%, 35%, 40 and 50 with the 400 sample. Then with the data, we go and check the case by case. In the case number one, as you will see, we could fit the line with around uh, 90, 7% above, except for the case of 0.5 ml, which is the last one. And the biggest one is 99%. We could fit the line with the second model. Then we go for the step number two with 400 more sample. We check it from 0.1 ml to 1 ml amount of the bus. You will see that we have the maximum R square of 0.77 and minimum of 0.97 of the gas with the um, 27 degree. And then same case we have uh, for the 40 degree of Celsius. For 60, we have 0.9 and 0.97. And for the next one, for the 60 degree, we have 0.96 and 0.99 as the fitting um, R square to our model. Then for the second, steps also with fixing the humidity and variant of the temperature also we were successful. Then we go one step ahead, we fix the temperature and change the humidity value. Then for that also we could get the good R square from 9.94 to 0.98 and we could just have two parameter instead of six and seven. Like the previous model, model number one, we check our result with the multi-expressional model. And we understand that uh, for the this model also, we have the good R square. If you will see here in the um, table, 
as I show, we have the minimum R square of 0.97 for the multi-expressional, which we have for the MP MPS as the 0.97. Means that from that point, we are real near. But with the highest um, rate, we could go 0.99 for MPS, which highest of uh, multi-expressional is 0.98. Then it means that 1% we could improve uh, the performance of the mathematical model, which we propose. Then uh, we check. Uh, the model and validate it and we understand that our model is uh, good and it's working and can cover the whole area of my uh, sensor response. As I tell you, this is one of the simplest uh, uh, with the less number of variable, uh, which is till today it's uh, developed for the gas sensor. And most of the uh, mathematical model, which currently nowadays we have, each, um, it, it has lots of parameter and it's difficult to. If you want to read more about the Inos part and that there is one paper that we published and it has more even citation till today, just within eight months we publish, uh, you can read this and study more about it. Okay, that was all uh, about my talk. And uh, I use some reference for you, but mainly you can refer to our publication and our book, which easily you can find it uh, from the net. Uh, once again, thank you from organizer to giving the chance for me to talk about our model and our achievement. If um, you have any question, now I'm online and we can talk about it. Thank you so much.